So when we talk about having a change in the boiling point or a change in the freezing point, we're talking about a property, one of the colligative properties that has to do with how much of a solution is solute. It's something about the concentration. Another one of these is related to osmosis. Now, in osmosis, you have the fact that there will be a migration of water through a semipermeable membrane. It will spontaneously flow through that membrane. When it has a choice of which side to be on, that, well, there has to be two different types of things for it to be making some sort of a choice, right? If things were exactly the same on both sides, then it wouldn't matter which side it was on and the amount that we're going to the right or the left would be exactly the same and you wouldn't notice anything. But if you have a situation where one side of the membrane has a higher concentration of water, or you could talk about the concentration being higher of the solute that was dissolved in the water, it's a different thing. The more you have solute in there, the lower your concentration of water will be. The less solute there is, the higher the concentration of the water and the lower the concentration of the solute. So you see they operate opposite. But the fact of the matter is then, if the water is able to go through the membrane and the solute is not, then the water is going to go where there's less water. It's going to try to balance it out. So the semipermeable membrane will allow water to go through because it has small enough channels, holes, that the water can go through. That's a fairly small molecule, and it doesn't have a charge, whereas it won't let an ion through because of the ions, you know, negative ions are quite large, and they are not going to go through, and they have a charge on them, and that lets, it makes it difficult for them to go through, too, because they start getting attracted to the sides of the membrane. Why is it that we always talk about people not having enough water to drink? Well, you can't drink salt water. There is a big difference in the amount of salinity, how many salts are dissolved in it, and it turns out that even though your body has some salt in it, it is not as salty as seawater. If you are looking at this, you can look at it in terms of looking at what happens to the red blood cells in your blood if you have uh, a change in the amount of salinity. There are terms for the, for the different solutions. If you have something that's hypertonic, that's a solution that has a higher, hyper, higher, right? solution of solutes than inside a normal red blood cell, inside your body in general. And that would mean that there's going to be a flow of water out of the cell because it's going to say, hey, there's not enough water outside there. I'm going to leave this cell, go through the cell wall, which is a semi-permeable membrane, and the cell will end up shrinking because it's losing water. An isotonic, iso, remember, means the same. So this has the same sort of uh, amount, molarities, concentration uh, of salts inside and outside of the cell. And so there is no net flow. If a molecule of water leaves, there'll be another molecule of water that's coming in. It does not change the cell at all. Hypotonic, remember hypo is under, so it's less. The solution has fewer solutes in it compared to the cell. And because of that, it has more water than what's inside the cell. And the water will flow into the cell and it will puff up the cell. Now your normal red blood cell looks like, almost like a donut. I mean, it's not a donut because it doesn't have a hole, but it has a divot. And it's a good thing it has that divot because on any given day, you may be slightly dehydrated or slightly overhydrated. And it has then the ability to expand or contract a little bit because of the fact that it has this shape. If it was a com completely spherical thing, as soon as you started packing more stuff into it, it would not be able to hold anymore. So what we have here is the difference between if it's in an isotonic 
solution, it will retain its characteristic shape. If you put it in a hypertonic solution, water is going to leave and it's going to shrink itself down. You can kind of think of wow, a balloon, an old balloon looks after it starts losing its air, it starts getting kind of lumpy. It's no longer perfectly smooth. And this is what you see. If on the other hand, you put it in something that's hypotonic, where it has much more water and much less salt, then the water is going to flow into the cell and puff it up. If it get, is in this situation for too long, it may even explode, which you don't want your red blood cells to explode. That's just not how that works. It's very bad for you.